tell Mitchell you are everywhere right now. I mean, you you're you are literally on SNL. You're in a Christmas movie. You've got a book. There's buzz about some good burger. Um, let me just start with the surprise on my TV from last week. Um, I was cracking up, you know, watching this this Keenan and Kelly sketch. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so cute. It's so funny. My son used to watch the show all the time. So I'm like, oh my God, it looks just like the set. And you come busting in. Like, how did you get involved? Were you part of writing this? Okay, so uh, how it happened, uh, Kiki, uh, obviously the host that week, uh, did an amazing job all while pregnant. <laughs> and so um, she called, uh, they had a meeting and this was one of her ideas that she wanted to do. Uh, Keenan loved it, a whole SNL, like cast and crew loved it. And so they were like, we got to get killed. We got to get killed in this. <laughs> and so uh, Keenan was like, I could just text him. You know what I mean? <laughs> and give him a call. So he he hits me up and I'm like, uh, yes, I heard the idea. I was like, this is super, super funny. Uh, it's a, like a dark Jordan Peele take on <laughs> Keenan and Kel reboot. I'm like, this is genius, of yeah. course. Uh, and when I got there, shout out to the SNL like set designers. I mean, they turned that around in 24 hours and it looked exactly like the Keenan and Kel set. Uh, super amazing. Uh, a fun time. Keenan and I had a blast. We're, we're having fun surprising our fans, uh, you know, this whole year. <laughs> and so it's just been fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, talk about, yeah, a very dark turn because like you die and then she has this big reveal. Like it's really Kel's big. I mean, so freaking funny did you plan were you part of like the plot or anything like that like no no the- not at all like it was all uh written in there uh you know shout out to the snl writers <laughs> that was in there but as far as the physical comedy and all that oh yeah i brought i brought that to the table uh because they were like you know the 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 kel foo yeah. Uh, that, was, that was written in there and they were laughing they were like yo we didn't know that you were gonna do this kill food they thought I was just gonna say it and then I did all this like physical comedy and they were like oh yes yes let's go <laughs> yes those karate moves were amazing so like did you practice them or do you just like go for it when you're on stage no, I, I went for it on stage. Uh, you know, that's the, I, I, I love doing physical comedy. And I was like, this is total Kel Kimball. This is something that uh, my character would do. So I'm like, let's go 100%. Let's bring it in there. <laughs> you know? That was, yeah, no, that was, that was a highlight. And everybody loved it. And I know now everyone, we're in this nostalgia era here where like, so now I bet the fans are like, uh, bring back the show. Like, is that even something you would guys would even think about doing you know we we, we talked about doing like a, a a special or a special night with Keenan and Kel you know yeah. what I mean it just so happened that uh Kiki had this fun idea so this kind of gave the fans what they've been looking for but I know they're looking for you know even even more of that so we'll see what happens <laughs> we'll yeah. see what happens yeah <laughs> you know and we and we got good burger we're, we're moving on with that so that's going on <laughs> yes, yeah. I, I want to ask you about that because this is there's been so many great great revivals like I just talked to Zach um from A Christmas Story because you know it's like Good Burger is like one of those iconic movies where you're like do we touch it do we just leave it alone you know and (laughs) did you guys look at a lot of scripts throughout the years or oh yeah that's that's why you've heard about it and didn't hear about it because we really wanted the script to be really good uh we don't want to ruin Good Burger (laughs) 1 and so uh but now uh, the script is really where it needs to be at, uh, and fans are gonna love this. Uh, it's a, it's great. It's like we're that's why we're super excited about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you can't give anything away, but it is interesting <laughs> because, like you know, like a Christmas story, the characters grew up. So yeah. you know, you guys were kids, you were teenagers at the burger joint. Um, through the years, did you ever kind of think of like? what happened to Ed? Like, where would he be as like a grown adult? Did ever, did ever like explore that? Just. Of course. Yeah. yeah. I, I always explored it. Uh, people, you know, hold Ed dear to their heart. And so they, they talk about it even, you know, on, on Instagram and things like that of like yeah. where he could be. Uh, and then in 2019, when we did the, all that reboot, 
we know with the whole new kids, uh, you know, cast of kids on there, yeah. uh, they asked if I could be Ed. You know, I didn't. I knew I was producing it, but the writers were like, "Hey, can you get back in the Ed suit?" So we got to see Ed again, you know, in this generation, uh, which gave him even more of a fan base, uh, even more. So we're yeah. taking a lot of that into consideration with part two. You know what I mean? Uh, with catering towards the the ones that saw it in the beginning, and then the ones that are being introduced to it, you know, via Netflix or Nickelodeon. Yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> will, will fans um, get a lot of the same humor and a lot of the same lines, you know, sort of like that nostalgia feeling as well? Yeah. You know, like I, I can't say too much, no, but I, I will say it's like, it's like part one on, on steroids. <laughs> I, was, I, I, I will say that because it's okay. going to like, for the ones that saw it originally, they're going to be like, yo, okay, I remember that. I see what cool. they're doing. Um, yeah, you're going to be excited like that. <laughs> we'll take them back. How close are you guys to getting start? Like, is this something that we're going to get to see in the near future or should we? Oh, yeah, definitely near future. Very, very soon. Like, this is constantly uh, a conversation, meetings with my team, Kena's team, Paramount, uh, yeah, it's it's going down. <laughs> yeah, that is amazing. That's great news. That's wonderful. Super fun news. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, we can check you out in All I Didn't Get for Christmas, which I think I mentioned to you. I am. I will not watch a Hallmark movie. I refuse. It's always the same thing. It's not that funny. It's kind of cheesy, kind of sappy. So I'm like, well, I'm watch this because Kel's really funny and Gabby's really <laughs> funny. And my God. <laughs> It's so, it reminded me of Groundhog Day, kind of, you know, that like yes. snarky, like she's pissed, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it, it was such a great concept, like, you know, sending a mean Christmas list to Santa <laughs> and then it, it all comes true. Yeah. Uh, and then this, you then you got this elf that comes that doesn't want to do his job either <laughs> coming to He's help. Uh, it was such a great script and it's not, it's a different type of Christmas movie. Uh, that's what I was intrigued about it. Yeah. Uh, and I love hearing people like, like Richard saying how you enjoyed it. <laughs> that's yeah. what, that's what we want. Yeah. Uh, and it was just so good. I mean, to work with Gabby, I mean, we know her for a drama, but I mean, as far as a comedian, she is so funny. I mean, we laughed on set. Uh, I really feel like we need to drop the blooper reel because <laughs> it was so much improv uh, and that's cracking up. And then working with Loretta Devine as well. I had to oh, yeah. pinch myself a lot of times in scenes like where I'm like, yo, I'm working with the legend, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yes, yeah. yes, <laughs> yes. No, I mean, her, but it is interesting. Her comedic timing with you, oh. you guys really played off each other. Is this your first time working with Gabby? Yes, first time working with Gabby, which was shocking to a lot of people, you know what I mean? Because yeah. they're like, yo, we we need more of that. So I, I feel like uh, we're going to have to do more movies together. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. for sure. For sure. You mentioned improvise because there were a lot of lines that were just, they came off so naturally. Would you say mm -hmm. that you guys were throwing in a few jokes that they kept in that they... Oh yeah, we 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 would do takes where um, you know it was the way it was written, but then uh, Brittany, our director, you know, she knows that we like to improv, and, and Gabby definitely <laughs> loves to improv, and so uh, she was like, "Okay, you guys just go now, just go." You know, here's the situation. Let's see what happens. <laughs> and then, like, we would just rock it out, and it was so much fun. You know. <laughs> Is there anything you can think of? Because I, I literally just watched it. Um, any scene that like was all your, yours? <laughs> oh, let me see. Uh, the part at the end uh, when she was talking about uh, Amorian and B2K, that part, <laughs> that was like, that was, she made that up on, on the fly. And really? I just kind of like laughed and kept going, <laughs> going with it. And then I had to like a little call back with that. Uh, in the scene where she's writing to Santa again, another list, and she's like pissed off and she's putting it in there. All of that was just all we're all over the place, really? <laughs> which, was, which was fun because it made it it made it feel more real. Like we knew what we were doing and she knew like, OK, I'm really upset at Santa. Let me just go off, you know, so we had a blast with that. <laughs> yeah. That is amazing. Yeah, no, it did feel like that. It it definitely yeah. felt like that. That was fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and also, not that you're not busy enough, 
you have a children's book out. Tell me about this. <laughs> Oh, yes. Uh, Prank Day. Uh, I'm so excited about this book. I love like race to the finish action adventures. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to do a story like that for kids like from eight to 12 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just a fun, fun novel. It's about a kid named Chase that loves doing pranks in on April, uh, April Fool's Day. And he does these pranks to impress a girl and some of the cool kids. But when he does it uh, on April 2nd, all the pranks come true. So that means now there's a running refrigerator running through the neighborhood. There's clowns coming out of toilets. He has to figure <laughs> out why this is happening. Uh, and I, I don't want to give it away, but it's a reason why all of this is happening. Uh, and it's just a fun, fun book. And one of his pranks can change his life uh, completely uh, and forever. And so uh, it's been a great book. Kids have been enjoying it. Uh, I'm loving seeing parents uh, taking pictures with their kids, reading it. Uh, kids have been, you know, drawing the characters and uh yeah i just i'm just having a fun time with this book <laughs> oh that's so that's yeah. so creative what um what's the age range that this is uh eight to twelve eight to twelve <laughs> so that like tween tween age perfect. <laughs> perfect and it's exactly the type of kids that would be pulling pranks you know they find the oh, yeah. you know is your refrigerator running you know go chase it that type of thing so <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> were oh, you yeah. a big prank player puller when you were that age yeah, yeah. I would do prank calls. I would prank my teachers when I was a kid, all that stuff. I got in trouble, uh, you know, with, with doing that stuff. So a lot of the stuff I go, no, 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 don't, don't do it. But <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that is amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, and speaking of when you were younger, I also was uh, like thinking, you know, I just want to take a look at Keenan and Kel, the pilot. Holy moly, babies. Wow babies and it's interesting to see your trajectory as an actor how far do you ever kind of look back at you know because you were how old were you when you did that Ooh, uh well it was it started before the king and the kale pilot because we yeah. were doing uh all that before right. that so keenan and i met on all that and we were i want to say with that sketch show we were 14 like 14 15 years old yeah, we went on there. And then we started the uh, like Keenan and Kel show kind of like two years after that. So we were just turning like 16 around that time. And so, babies, yeah. Yeah, we're babies. We were babies and we were just talking about that. We literally at the People Choice Awards, uh, you know, I went to go support him and uh, with him hosting. And we were talking about that backstage, just our our journey and, and where we've come and, you know, how thankful we are, you know, for for this journey and how long it's been and people still loving it. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's very yeah. enduring. Um, and I think also your comedy is 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 funny. It's spicy, but it's also very sweet. There's also a yeah. sweetness and a kindness in that. Is that something sort of that you guys have always wanted to stay true to being really funny, but not going for that, you know, that too low thing <laughs> <laughs> i don't know it, 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 it it's kind of organically happened but then also too when you look at um the comedy that he enjoys and that i enjoy uh, -huh. uh it's very similar and we kind of like the same type of comedians in the same type of movies yeah. and so now like i kind of get an understanding as to why you know uh mm -hmm. we we love the rat pack you know what i mean we love you know lucille ball and just all these different characters and so uh i could totally understand you know <laughs> why we're doing it this way yeah <laughs> yeah because it, it's, it's hard to be a comedian in this in this era like the cancel culture is fast but then sometimes people are really going over that line um yeah. Yeah, how do you sort of balance it as a comedian, staying really funny, but yeah. not going for the jugular sometimes? <laughs> uh, yeah, and it's true because, you know, I've done uh, stand-up as well uh, for a few years. And, and you know, you work out your set and, you know, and sometimes people, you know, with comedians, they might say the wrong thing, but then they can, you know, fix that. Go, oh, that didn't work at that club. But nowadays everybody's taping it and all that stuff like that. So you got to be very mindful, you know, of uh, the type of jokes that you're doing and having empathy for others. It's, it's just the times that we're living in. But for me, uh, it's pretty easy because I'm a clean comic and yeah. that's always been, uh, you know, the way I look at things anyway. You know what I mean? I'm uh, 
want to do good wholesome family entertainment so that's just been me <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 no that's yeah. and that is true and yeah. i think yeah. and i think people find that refreshing and they enjoy that um yeah. because you do you have such a good heart you're doing all this humanitarian work tell me about about that especially around the holidays yes uh around the holidays it's a, a great time to give mm -hmm. uh and, and show love to others and that's why i hooked up uh, with World Vision. Uh, they have a wonderful gift catalog. I love World Vision because, um, you know, I've been in the entertainment business, family entertainment business for years, and uh, it's important to them to help out families, help out families in need, uh, mm -hmm. put a smile on the kid's face, um, take away hunger, you know, as well. And they're doing this in a hundred different countries and also within the U.S. as well. Uh, and you can donate by getting on uh, the gift catalog and picking one of the gifts that can help a family and change their lives forever, you know, overseas or right here in the U.S. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. And is, is this just the beginning of your work with them or have you worked with them in the past? Oh, I've worked with them in the past. This is like our uh, third year uh, working together. Uh, and I just love what they're doing. You know, uh, and I, as as uh, as many times as I can help with them, I love doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so important, and it's like giving a big hug to. I feel like we're. I always say this, like we're all family. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like I'm meeting you for a reason, and we're all family. And I think that if we we know that and share that type of love and, and give someone a hug way across the world, uh, that's so important. And uh, World Vision does that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 